Hello, this is Carol King, the founder of Custom Home Builder Solutions, also known as CHS. In this particular video, we are going to start talking about how CHS is so great at helping you produce waivers of lien for checks you've written or for all of the total of checks you've written for a job, one or the other. For checks you've written, it would be progress waivers of lien, or you could do final waivers of lien that are the total that you paid to a subcontractor or trade contractor for a particular job. Where I am right now is on a website for Texas because we are in Texas and we have a large quantity of our customers that are in Texas so I just started here but I'll let you know that I found this by going to weblaws.org and then I was able to select Texas and then I was looking for waiver of lien and search fields until I got to the forms let's take a quick look here a waiver and release given by a claimant or potential claimant is unenforceable unless it substantially complies with the applicable form described by the various subsections. So you're required to give a standardized waiver of lien that includes various information and you'll see the various information that's required by these underlined areas. A check from your company, the maker of the check, in the sum of some certain amount, payable to some certain subcontractor or trade contractor, etc. You have to have the property of, the name of the owner located where it is. So having a form where that you can put all this information in based on the checks that you've written or the check that you're doing a waiver for is really actually pretty complicated. But CHS has handled it, figured out how to fill in these blanks for you and various things here. But here's the site. You could copy and paste this in what you're going to see in a minute. So let's get started and let's take a look at all of it inside CHS. So here we are on the main menu of CHS and the first thing I'd like you to know is that if you can't figure out where to find waivers, you could use the index and start typing WAI and click on it and the waivers of lien menu will open. Also back on the home tab, it is under vendor setup because it has to do with vendors and then waivers of lien. It's already detected that I have it open, but it would open this very same one. So this is called the menu because it has places to set up your waiver styles and then ways to select what progress waivers you might be wanting to produce or final waivers. The first thing that we're going to discuss is how to add or edit and set up waiver styles. So I'm going to click this button right here, waiver styles, and you'll notice that I have a list of waivers and that I've titled them to be meaningful to me. In Texas, we have something called conditional and unconditional waivers and progress waivers and final waivers. The difference between progress and final is that progress will be per check that you've written to a vendor as the job progresses. And final would be a waiver that shows the total that you paid to the vendor for a particular job. You'll need to discuss all of this with your attorney as far as what type of waivers you need to produce because we are not allowed actually to provide you templates or forms for producing a legal document like waivers because we are not attorneys. I was told that once after I was supplied it early on in CHS that I'm not allowed to do that. So that's why we set up a way for you to conveniently create your styles as per your state's requirements. So the first thing you do is add a new waiver style, which is very simple. You just type in some meaningful title like I have here in the new style ID, and then you select whether it's going to be final or progress. And I would put the word final and progress over here so it's easy to see, even though CHS will also show you the type. I'm not going to submit that because I don't want to start from scratch, but let's go ahead and see about setting up a conditional progress two page. Let's do that. Once you put the title in, then you click the link over here for set up or edit this style body. What you'll notice is that there's some tabs going on here. First of all, there's information telling you about the four sections for a waiver style, that there's a title, page one and page two, and there's a section for the body of printing multiple waivers if you're not going to do all the substitution of a form and you just want to do some quick bunch of waivers that don't do any markers or anything where you are substituting to fill in blanks. You'll use the value markers on page one to have the program substitute data. You should obtain samples of waivers from your builder association or your attorney. Have your attorney approve the text for your waivers before issuing waivers. CHS again is prohibited from providing sample waiver documents because we are not attorneys. And a tip, let your text wrap in the editors as you type. The inner key will cause a new paragraph. Now I'd like to mention that if you decide that you are copying from 
Microsoft Word or something like that and then pasting in. Word can bring in a bunch of symbols that you don't really want in your paragraph but will show up when you paste it here. So my suggestion is that you first paste it into something like Notepad from Word and then copy it from Word into CHS because the Notepad will get rid of those symbols. So let's click on the title first of all. So this was a conditional waiver. And this is what our Texas Association of Builders gave us for putting in as the title. So I type things in. I can change the size of the text, the font size of the text right here. I can make it bold right here with the editor and change the font size to be a little bigger. And I click the thing. I highlight it over it. You highlight over things like this and then you click to center or put it left. Hopefully you're used to various types of word editors like this. So that's about all I need for the title. This is just what would be right at the top of the page. Now page one is the most interesting part in how CHS solves being able to fill in the blanks basically for you on the form. So first of all, maybe you'd be on that side if you were in Texas. You might have copied all of that out of the site and then just dropped it in here and then you would need to start working on polishing it up how you like. But the main key here is wherever you need to fill something in from the check or from the job, we have something called markers. See how this has three asterisks in front of it, then street address and three asterisks. Same with city, same with job code. And those value markers, we call them, are listed over here. So wherever you put that into your text, what CHS will do will go out and where it finds this with three asterisks in front and after. In your body, it will substitute like right here the check amount of the particular check that you're preparing a progress waiver for. It'll put the job code in here. It'll put the home buyer name where it's called for down here, the street address, etc., etc. So hopefully you get the idea. You'll need to experiment with it. And after you get it all done, just like you like, you should save it. Up here, it'll be showing that you should save it. And then what you can do, since we said this was going to be a two-page one, is that you can go to page two, because in Texas, a lot of times on page two, we'll have stuff for the notary to sign it, etc. That's up to you. And you can do this or not. It's called optional, and it does not use the markers. If you're not going to use it, just put not using in here, because it actually kind of wants something in everything. Over here is a place for body for multiple waivers at once. Now this does not have markers in it. It's just something you can put in and then you can produce a whole bunch of waivers all at once because it's simple. It's not bogging down trying to substitute markers. You're going to notice in a little bit when we start producing the waivers that you're going to have to do one at a time unfortunately because substituting in where all the markers is is a big memory hog. So if you try to do a whole bunch of waivers at once, it won't work. But if for some reason you're allowed to do something where you're not substituting in that stuff, you can put some verbiage in here and then when the list of people that you want to send waivers to opens, you can choose to just do printing multiple ones of them like this and then it'll attach some detail about the check to it. We'll see that in a little bit, but that's what this is for. If you're not using it, you should type not using because it kind of does want something in everything just because. After you've saved it, you'll probably want to preview how it's going to look. So we're going to preview the two page one. I have some sample data stuck in here to just use. And when I do this, I've set mine to always ask me. So I want to open it with Adobe Acrobat is what I'm doing, which is the best way to review it. And you can see here, if I make this a little bit smaller and I get back over here, go ahead and close this down and leave my Adobe thing here. You can see back where the markers are. If you can see it somewhat here, you can see concerning the property at, and then it has the street address filled in there, the project again, street address, the job number where the asterisks are. It has from Robert's Custom Home, which is who we are. The amount of the check over here is stuck in where you had sum of check amount, etc. So you get the idea. Wherever there's a marker, it's sticking in some data from the check. So that's basically how you do it to get it all set up and get it ready to go, a certain style that you're going to use. So you can do it so that it is compatible with what your state is requiring. So I'll close that. It is very similar if you're doing a final waiver. Let's do set up a final. And if I go to page one, it says with markers. But the only difference that you're going to notice here is that it says job total instead of check amount. So in here, we have job total in our verbiage for the final waiver. And again, you'll need to get that from your attorney. So that's the difference 
difference here in setting up your uh, final is that you're using a job total because it's the total for the whole job. So I'll close that. So that's how you set up your styles. So like I said, that's how you set up your styles, add or edit waiver styles. And we will continue on after this video to talk about how we print and produce waivers of lien, make selections for what we want to print and either print progress or final. And we will talk about how we are tracking waivers and storing hard copies of the waivers that you print in the very next video. So thank you for watching and stay tuned.